Hi everyone, welcome back. It's Phil here from Geophilgus Fishkeeping, and this is my Five for Friday. All right, guys, I know it's a little bit late. I do apologise. I have been out with the uh, out with the family today, seeing some family and friends. Um, I just got back. I am I am on half term holidays, so that's one reason why my schedule is a little bit off and a little bit out of routine. So I do apologise for it being a little bit late, but here it is. With being on half term holidays, obviously me sitting in the car just giving you a little bit of a, a rant or whatever it may be is is it's not happening today. So I'm just going to give you a quick update on a this tank behind me, um, b some of the fish I showed you in the unboxing video earlier on. And maybe one or two other fish along the way. Okay, let's dive in. So as you can see, this tank behind me, still not much more better off than when you last saw it. It's still empty. Um, it's in my bad books at the moment. I was out here till probably nearly close to three o'clock in the morning last night, trying to get it sorted. Fingers crossed, it may be. It's all to do with the pulling part of it, if I'm honest. It's it's underneath. It's, it's not that the tank itself isn't holding water. It's just where the water... Uh, drains out of the tank and into the sump and just my lack of plumbing skills is, is, is mainly what's causing the issue um, I have resulted to my last resort which is what I didn't really want to do but I have done it which is silicone I've siliconed it all in I know that two of the three pipes are now fully watertight it's just the third one that's causing me a little bit of issues um, I don't think that when I siliconed the base of the tank was was 100% dry and I think that's what's caused my issue so I have uh, had to rip it out, dry it up and re-silicone because I siliconed it earlier on in the week, it's all cured now or should be what I originally did and I intended to fill it up in this video but unfortunately as I've already said it's not gone to plan, it still was showing a uh, slow leak. I decided to rip it out and re-silicone it. I'm still not convinced it's done right. I'll know in the next day at the latest whether it's worked or not. Fingers crossed, it's sealed and I can start filling it all the way. One thing I will say though, I could have paid 80 pounds to get this installed. There would be no plumbing issues, it would be all installed without silicone as it should be and be working it would be full it would be stocked it would have been up and running for probably two if not three weeks by now but one reason i didn't opt for that other than to save 80 pounds was because i wanted to learn i wanted to learn about the plumbing i wanted to learn about the sump and i wanted to set it up myself and but for me doing it for the first time it hasn't been that simple so Yes, it's frustrating. Yes, I can't. I sometimes wish I paid the eighty pounds, but actually, I'm glad I didn't. I'm still glad I didn't because every step of this has been a learning curve. Every step of it has advanced my knowledge. I want to be able to share my experiences and share my uh, learning curves and share my advice with you guys. That's that's the whole point. So, yes, it's frustrating. Yes, it's still empty, and I wish it was stocked by now. But it is a learning curve. Okay, let's show you some fish. Okay, so this is my holding tank, and there's a number of fish in here that are waiting to go into the inside aquarium. There's a number of fish in here that are waiting to go into the stingray aquarium. So there's no lighting on it, the glare on it is awful, you can see through, there's no decor, it is literally just a holding aquarium. And I haven't shown you most of the fish that are in here, I've talked about them at times. Here is the giant guami that I got a few weeks ago, it's in one of my... Uh, videos one of my five for Fridays actually he's coming on quite nicely but I'm here to show you salt and pepper and there's pepper himself and here's salt again just looking at me saying so what <laughs> but anyway there he is with his so what on the side, amazing patterns, happy days, salt and pepper. These guys are what, about three, three inch or so, maybe four inch, got a lot of growing to do. Let's say hello to George, hi George, hi George. <laughs> the main reason I'm looking at this aquarium is here's the archers. There is four in there, there's three there. Same tank as the uh, Geophagus Pellegrini. 
I'm really, really pleased with these guys. They look absolutely awesome. I do kind of wish I'd got maybe another four, eight altogether. That would look brilliant. Hello, Titan. Hello, Titan. Hello, hello, hello. Yes, coming up to say hello. Ooh. Ooh. He wants feeding. Always wants feeding. Always wants feeding. And here on the inside, in the main aquarium, are my St. Napurka demons and my St. Napurka japaris. The japaris are looking a little bit thin at the moment. They do need to put on some weight. They do need to bulk up a little bit, but they seem happy enough within this aquarium. Sometimes they are showing a little bit stress symbols, stress signs of stress, but I think it's just new to being in the aquarium itself, along with the, uh, the St. Napurka demons. But they seem to have settled in relatively well, and they're eating, and everything's happy, so... I'm happy, and if you just look at these, you can probably understand why the St. Napurka demons are one of my favourite, favourite fish, favourite geophagus as well. Okay guys, I'm back here with, with George and the Clouded Arches and the Pellegrini. I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, I apologise that it is a little bit late in the day, but, but I hope you understand. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and if you're not a subscriber already, hit that subscribe button. And if you are a subscriber, make sure you've hit that bit bell notification button because I want you to miss out on any videos. Okay. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.